G'day trendsetters, coming to you today with my review of SRAM's fourth tier, their lowest tier, their less expensive tier of electronic shifting centered around the access technology. I was fortunate to attend SRAM's media camp for this group set, but before I rolled into camp, so to speak, I was under the impression this was going to be a launch for a mechanical version of this group set, which there is available. You can check out details of that group set linked in the description below. So to my surprise, SRAM has done it again, blowing my mind in other words. Those boffins, aka really smart people, have dropped the price of this group set to a level where most people will find it much more affordable. In fact, this group set is finding itself on many bikes at the OEM level, ranging in prices at about US $2,500 to US $3,500. The group set by itself on this bicycle is known as Apex Access Explorer. The complete group set, including the chain, the battery, the charger, rotors, etc., is going to set you back US $1,195. Obviously, some people are still going to be offended by that price and squawk online about it, but as I mentioned earlier, there is a mechanical version of the group set available. Two important things to mention before I kick off. This group set is one by only, no front derailleur, and it's centered at around a 10 to 44 or 11 to 44 cassette. I'll cover those details shortly. There's also an Access Eagle variant of the group set. It's almost the same, a different chain, a different derailleur, and a different cassette. A cassette designed for climbing some really steep as shit climbs, gnarly terrain, whatever floats your Boat. That group set by itself is priced at US $1,292, and once again, it's one by only. With those facts out of the way, and before I get into the deep nitty gritty of the review, it's time to cover how SRAM eTap Access works, because not everybody who's watching this video is going to be familiar with that technology. The system is super simple. The left pedal button shifts the rear derailleur up the cassette to an easier gear and the right shifter button shifts down the cassette to a harder gear. The derailleur shifts as fast as you can push buttons, although there is a multi-shift function if you're so inclined, which you can program inside the Access app. If you possessed an access compatible wireless dropper seat post, you can utilize the double press functionality of the shifters to drop, raise the seat post, etc. Really nice stuff. The shifters are extremely comfortable and reduced in size, and in my opinion, play a lot nicer with a bigger range of humanoid hand sizes. The Apex Axis shifters feature reach adjustment utilizing a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. It's easy to move the brake, lever, further or closer. Another huge advantage with this and any ETAP system, as you've only got one shift button per lever, there's no chance of accidental shifts, even if you're wearing winter gloves. The rear derailleur is the heart of the system and can shift a maximum cog of 44 teeth in size. SRAM have offered up some interesting cassette ratios. You get 10 to 44, 10 to 36, nice for flatter terrains, and both of those rely on the SRAM XDR cassette body standard. On this bike is a SRAM 11 to 44 cassette, which is 100% compatible with Shimano HG cassette bodies. I will say I much prefer this cassette as the 10 tooth cog is a little bit excessive in my opinion and not something I use too often. Chapeau to SRAM for this compatibility. These 12 speed cassettes are nickel plated chrome, so I expect a very good life over the long term. They're designed to play with SRAM's flat top chains. This is the Apex One wide crank set with aluminium arms available in 160, 165, 170, 172.5 and 175 millimeters. It utilizes the SRAM dub bottom bracket interface and chain rings are direct mount. Available sizes are 40T and 42T, but I understand there is a 38T option as well. This bike is fitted with the optional US $220 single-sided power meter upgrade. I'm not going in depth here, but that system is reliable and accurate for a single-sided system and is a very worthwhile upgrade. There's a chain retention system inside the derailleur. It relies on a spring clutch versus the pricier orbit fluid damper you'll find on Axis 4s and red rear derailleurs. 
Rear derailleur battery is the same that SRAM launched years ago with ETAP version 1 in 11 speed. It's small, light, simple to recharge, but I recommend carrying a spare with you, especially in a one by configuration. Obviously, battery life is going to depend on your riding area and shifting habits, but expect around five to 600 miles or somewhere close to 1,000 kilometers. The coin cell CR2032 batteries inside these shifters are the same as every level of ETAP access, and you can expect a couple of years' use. In all of my years of riding ETAP, I've lost shifting in the brake lever one time. Thankfully, I was near a Dollar General, a US convenience store of sorts, and picked up a replacement during the ride, but if you've got a heart rate strap, you can always pill for one from there in a jam. Like its more expensive siblings, Apex ETAP's rear derailleur enters sleep mode after 30 seconds of activity. However, that doesn't mean it quits working if you're freewheeling merrily down a mountain. Very subtle movements of the drivetrain keep it awake. Essentially, the system is in a perpetual state of readiness. Apex ETAP Access also leverages additional shift button functionality. In the case of these wireless blips, you can program these to shift the rear derailleur or activate a dropper seat post and so on. On to brakes, SRAM relies on DOT fluid just like most automobiles. DOT fluid handles the ingress over time of water entering the system better versus mineral oil and generally has a higher boiling point. Perhaps that is why SRAM has stuck with DOT. Brake lever fill is fantastic from the hoods or the drops, especially with the revised hood shape and there's plenty of power and modulation. Moving ahead, I've always liked the feel of SRAM's drop bar brake systems. They're akin to a well-dialed rim brake system, meaning no hyperspace feeling waiting for the pad to contact the rotor. SRAM Apex Explore connects to the Access Phone app just like every other Access component, where you can store multiple bike profiles, customize shifting, check battery status, update firmware, and so on. On to component weights. Now, I haven't had a chance to break this bike into pieces to weigh everything. However, that's not going to happen. Ha ha ha! But here is a handy chart from SRAM listing all of the component weights. When SRAM first launched their Explorer drivetrain concept centered around a one by drivetrain and a 10 to 44 cassette ratio. Now it's been expanded to an 11 to 44 cassette ratio. I thought they were a little bit crazy. However, that drivetrain concept has stood the test of time. You get a great spread of gears and it's only gotten better with this 11 to 44 cassette. Additionally, every ETAP system I've ever ridden, including this Apex Access version, has proven bomb-proof reliable in even the dodgiest of gnarly conditions. Which moves me to the next point, the value this group set represents is absolutely stellar. In fact, I'm questioning SRAM's sanity. When you compare this to the higher Zoot offerings such as RED, Force, Rival and so on, it's quite difficult to justify purchasing, say, a red group set to go slap onto your gravel bike, but food for thought. Regardless, you get the same excellent functionality and proven reliability with this lower tier, bottom tier group set, Apex Explore Access. The obvious point, this group set is heavier than those higher zoot offerings, but come on, when you think about it, a gravel bike laden down with bloody packs, sandwiches, top tube bags, whatever else madness you have bolted onto the bike, the weight is a little bit less significant. Of course, if you desire to get spicy, you can always mix and match these ETAP access components. So, for example, you could run, say, an Apex rear derailleur with a pair of rival shifters. Just as long as you keep compatibility in mind with the appropriate chain and cassette combinations. This drivetrain is not only perfect for those cyclists who love riding one by on gravel roads, it's also brilliant for those completely new to cycling, the shifting is so simple. No front derailers to worry about and further complicate things if you're not used to the whole concept of shifting gears, cadence, and that sort of thing. This drivetrain could also be a real winner in cyclocross with its 11 to 44 ratio in this example. Or if you have a flatter terrain nearby, you can always run that lovely 10 to 36 cassette to tighten the spacing in your gears 
a little. One by drivetrains are certainly not for everybody, but thankfully SRAM has you covered there as well. In fact, I've got reviews of SRAM rival ETAP Access in 2x and Force ETAP Access also in 2x. And those are linked in the description below. The retro grouch friction shifting crowd is likely going to be super pissed off by more electronic technology filtering into the drivetrain market. In my experience, electronic shifting saves energy. Now don't buy into the bullshit that friction shifting is a good thing. It's complete and utter garbage especially when you've been riding modern drivetrains. Sure, those friction systems work with any mechanical derailleur, but come on. The only place they have nowadays, in my opinion, is on a beautiful vintage bicycle. Some of the other advantages of riding electronic, think about riding all day. I mentioned saving energy. All those little gear shifts with a mechanical shifter, they add up. With this system, you get a simple button press. Energy saved, and when it's really cold, you can often lose dexterity in your wrists performing those mechanical shifts depending on your system. Again, simple button press, no work and faris. However, to keep any potential retro grouches happy, I mentioned this earlier, SRAM does produce a mechanical version of Apex. It's pretty tasty, I have ridden it, so SRAM's offering Plenty of drivetrains for all to consider. Wrapping up, no matter your thoughts on electronic drivetrains, mechanical or even friction, I am thankful there is a huge range of drivetrain components providing a flexibility in drivetrain and gearing choices circa 2023. When I first began this madness way back in 2006, myself and my mates, we were hodgepodge in group sets together, dremeling out chain rings to get lower gear ratios on non-compatible crank sets and all sorts of other madness. So there you have it trendsetters, my very detailed review of the fantastic SRAM Apex Access Explore, in this case group sets. I realize nowadays there's a veritable cornucopia of group sets, drivetrains, etc. available for your gravel bike, so I sincerely hope that my review in some way to helping you make an informed purchase decision. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for no bullshit group set reviews such as this one. No bullshit gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and my favorite, general madness, <laughs> All right, as all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you mm, in the next video.